Emily from Life So Savory, and today we are going to be adding some fun embroidery to a sweatshirt. So I hope you will follow along and join me for this. It's going to be kind of a quick and easy project, and I'm finding the video is looking a little squished today. So I don't know if it looks like that on your end, but it also is maybe a little blurry. I don't know. The whole thing's weird. I was trying out two different cameras. Then I saw that this one looks weird. So maybe I should just test out the other one and come back to this one and see what's going on. So let's check over at my sewing machine and see how that one is looking. Sorry, it's a little time delay. That looks fine. Okay. Then if I go back over here to this one, I don't know. Does it, does it look blurry to you guys? I feel like it just looks blurry. I don't know. Can I not? <laughs> Why won't you focus weird? I don't know. Okay, well, we're just going to see what happens. I'm only actually going to be over here for a few minutes hooping um, my project, and we'll switch back and forth a few times, but I'm glad you're here, and hopefully we can still have a good show. A lot of it, we're going to be on the other camera. I'm doing some close-ups of the embroidery that I'm showing you. So I didn't want this to take forever live, so I did start this project. Okay. So I am going to be adding some yarn couching, which I've started and some embroidery on top of the couching. Um, I know why is this a squishy version? I don't know. <laughs> it's just the whole thing is weird. So if you're just joining, I said, I feel like this camera is a little bit squished and a little bit blurry today. And I don't know why, because it's the same camera I always use, but I just feel like it's a little squished down. But we're going to be switching over to the other camera for the majority of the embroidery. So hopefully you can follow along. And this isn't too bad here for um, this first part of it. Okay, so the yarn couching, it's super soft. Okay, the yarn is sewn right on there. It's beautiful. It's all fuzzy. We'll do deal with the tails later. Okay. I know. What are those black bands? I don't even know. Why is it doing that? It's weird. Okay. So we obviously need to put the F on here, but with the yarn couching letters, um, you can only do so many. So F-A-I-T-H, five letters. It wanted me to use my huge nine by 14 hoop for that, which there's no way I'm fitting that in this tiny sweatshirt, okay? So I have been moving the hoop around to um, do the placement and it's been fine. And I'm actually gonna show you a fun technique with one of the brother apps called My Snap App, where you take a picture of your hoop, it transports it over to your machine and you get to look in real time on the hoop where the pieces are to place that final F and to place the word that we're gonna put under it. So today we're gonna to combine the yarn couching and traditional machine embroidery for a fun look. So actually I realized I need to grab my other kind of um, stabilizer. So under this yarn couching, I have traditional cutaway medium weight stabilizer inside the sweatshirt, okay? And then we're gonna put some of this clear um, stabilizer on top when we add the other embroidery over the yarn so that your um, embroidery foot doesn't get stuck in the yarn. But first things first, let's create an F with the yarn. Now, to embroider sweatshirts, you don't have to do this, but I find it so much easier if I cut open the side seam, okay? so. If there is actually a side seam on the sweatshirt, I'll pick it open carefully with my seam ripper. This one is a really cheap sweatshirt and it happens to be tubular and there were no side seams. So I made one. So hopefully I don't regret that later, but I made a side seam and I think it's gonna be fine. We'll sew it up when we're finished with this project. All right, again, if you're just joining, I feel like my video is a little bit squished today. I don't know why, I'm sorry, but, um, Apparently, 
I just needed to be brought down to size. Um, so yeah, so it's a little squishy and I'm not sure why. All right, so I am re-hooping this for the third time to add the F with the yarn couching. Can I squish it in here? Do I need to loosen it? Hooping a sweatshirt is kind of thick fabric. So I've also done it where I just use sticky stabilizer and I don't even um, squish the fabric in. So you can do that if you um, want to. Okay, pull the fabric tight so that it embroiders um, smoothly. And I want it mostly straight because I'm trying not to... Um, I want to deal with the placement, but I also don't want to have to like straighten it out any weird angles. So trying to hoop it uh, straight. Okay. So I started in the middle. I embroidered out. I'm adding, um, <laughs> yay. That sounds like fun. Yes. Okay. Well, you have to try the couching and tell me what you think because I am loving it. Okay. It does um, take some time to find the right yarn that's thick enough to look cute and fuzzy, but not too thick because it has to flow through the needle. Uh, okay. So we want to put an F here. My, this kid, the school that my kids go to is called Faith Christian Academy. So I'm making a sporty looking sweatshirt that's going to say Faith Christian. So we're doing Faith with these blocky yarn letters, really cool. And then I'm gonna use a scripty font with traditional um, thread embroidery to put the word Christian underneath. So we're gonna try that out and see if we can combine it for a fun sporty looking t-shirt or sweatshirt um, that combines both yarn couching and traditional machine embroidery. We will have to rehoop one more time centered over the word faith so that we can put our um, letters in the bottom. And hopefully I can use this size um hoop but i might have to go up to the nine by nine which i can i just of course the smaller one is easier on the sweatshirt all right so my snap app if you're not familiar with that it is such a fun feature of um certain brother machines and so it's called actually my design snap so i'm pulling it up on my phone and we're gonna snap capture for frame positioning okay so what i want to do is I want to import this to my screen so that I can use it to position that F perfectly because we'll be able to see exactly where it looks like. Okay, so it says hold your smart device parallel to the embroidery frame and there are guides on the hoop. Let's see, I haven't ever used this one, but this one has the, I wonder if, I'm, oh, there it goes cannot be detected. I thought this one could, it has the guides on it, but it might, I might have to switch to the big one. Okay, we're gonna switch, this one works. Um, I thought I could use, well, this one only has the two. Let me try that again. Okay. There are um, like coding on the hoop that should allow it to be detected. And there's guides on the screen that I'm trying to line up, but I don't, it's not seeming to want to do it. Why? Hmm. No. Why won't you? Let's, let's try this one. Maybe it's something with my app. I should be able to do this one. Try moving around the table, I know. Oh, and that one went right away, weird. I don't wanna send that to machine. Okay, let me try again. Let me try to get this as flat as possible. I've done it several times with the nine by nine hoop and it works perfectly. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it says hold still and it'll be three, two, one. 
It'll take a picture of what looks on there, send to the machine. Yes, we're going to do that. Sent to embroidery. Okay, so we're going to switch over to the um, other camera and take a look at um, some of the details of setting up this machine here. Okay, so, yep, that one takes a minute to turn on. But once it does, should be good and hopefully it's not blurry or anything weird. All right, so I'm going to slide this hoop into the machine, get it positioned, pull out any of that extra fabric, okay, because we don't want to embroider through any of the other layers of the sweatshirt. Okay, so let's go over to the screen first, and then we'll pull it back. Um, all right, so couching, we need an F, set. Then we want to see an image was sent from the mobile app. We want to update. Yes, we do. Okay, so it's going to move. All right, so now we see what is in the hoop literally live in real time. So we're going to edit this, okay? I reduced all of them to their smallest size, which isn't much different. And we're going to rotate it. And then we can position it right exactly where we want so that it fits perfectly on the design. Can you see that, how easy that is and how it shows me exactly um, where that F is going to be, okay? So perfect. Now I'm going to pull this back a little bit so that you can see the whole machine. I'll also give you a close up of the yarn pouching in a minute. It's already threaded through. I have the yarn threaded through. And, okay, so let's go okay. Embroidery to move over. We have thread that matches the yarn. It's the yarn that I have found so far that I like the best, there might be more, is this Yarn Be Tender Touch. Okay, I found that it's Nice and fuzzy, but it's not too thick and seems to work pretty good. So I like to pull out some yarn and leave it up here on the top of my machine. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see how I've got that yarn pulled out right here on top so that it's nice and loose flowing through the thread guide here, down through the couching attachment on the side, and then onto the couching foot on the machine. Okay, so whew, there you go. We've got a lot going on. Then you use this little um, metal needle string piece, which has a big eye and then a tiny metal piece, and you thread that through the yarn, through the foot, the couching foot and you're ready to sew. All right. So again, I'm going to make sure there's no sweat double layer of sweatshirt underneath my hoop and I'm going to go ahead and embroider the F. Okay. I like to watch when I'm doing the couching, even if I've already got it going, because I do feel like with the yarn couching, there's just a few more things that can go wrong than with some other embroidery and Sometimes I feel like I need to adjust the yarn. I need to keep, make sure that it's flowing nicely. And um, occasionally it does sort of get stuck in here and I have to uh, mess with it. Sorry, I feel like there's a bit of, speaking of messing with it, <laughs> the thread, which is white, to match. I just thought like it was stuck, but maybe not. Okay. So you want your thread to match your yarn so that you don't see it. And then you also want to make sure the yarn is flowing through. So sometimes I'll just pull a little bit on this yarn to make sure that it's coming through nicely and not pulled too tight. Um, sort of a fine line. And I have felt like it's a definitely a learning curve on that but let's give you a close-up look of how the yarn is being pulled 
through the couching foot and going on the machine. Oh, sorry. Let's also not make you sick. All right. So there it is, embroidering out the F. It goes back and forth, back and forth. The yarn is fed through the same hole, which the needle goes up and down through and creating these little sort of tags that attach the yarn to the sweatshirt. Okay, the whole thing is quite fascinating, I feel like. And then also over here, this little green arrow or, or check mark, cross mark, is moving back and forth, showing me, showing me exactly where it's embroidering on the project. Oh, no. Because the bobbin thread is almost empty. I thought I could get through. Okay. <laughs> that is not what I needed right now. Okay, well, let's do a little bobbin threading. <laughs> oh boy, okay. So I'm gonna use the same thread that is in here. Let's see, we're gonna cut it, cut the thread. Okay, now I'm gonna use this thread to thread the bobbin, okay. And hopefully be able to change it out without causing too much distress for our yarn. So I will show you how I'm going to cut off the yarn. We're actually going to, then we'll pull that back down through the other side and tie it off. So we'll start and stop the yarn. Um, speaking of weird notes. We'll start and stop the yarn um, with cutting it off so we can change out the bottom because otherwise we're gonna have a loop of yarn that we don't want to deal with. So anyway, we're going to just make a very full bobbin because we're going to need it for the other part of the embroidery and we'll go from there. So maybe while that's spreading, I should go turn on the overhead light. It got really dark in here all of a sudden. See if that makes it a little bit brighter. I think so. Yes, I think it's going to turn out really cute. Um, I've made several of these sweatshirts and so I made some for my son's high school and I wear them to like basketball games and stuff. And I get asked every time, oh my goodness, where did you get that sweatshirt? I didn't see that on the, um, like the <coughs> spirit wear site. And I'm like, it's not a spirit wear site. I made it. Um, and I've also made one for a few friends. So I've just offered to some friends, if you buy a sweatshirt, I will embroider it. So I'm not buying a sweatshirt, but the yarn is not worth very much. So I'm happy to do the embroidery. Okay, so now what I need to do is I'm gonna pull this out. Okay, so we can change the bobbin. You saw I just cut the yarn right there, leaving a long enough piece that I can pull it through the back with a darning needle to be able um, to finish it off so that you don't really, we won't really see it. Okay, so I'm just switching out the bobbin. I should have changed it. I even looked and I thought to myself, oh, there's enough, which I should know that every time I think that, there's not enough. Because <laughs> every time I make a conscious decision, to do it. All right, so now we want to make sure we have a long enough tail pulled out again as well. I'm going to go back just like five stitches so there's a little bit of overlap and then it should make it easier to um, do 
the rest of this. Okay, so we're gonna put this down. We're gonna continue on. We'll pull both those yarn ends through in the same spot and then I just tie them to each other to finish that off. So let's bring this a little bit closer to watch the rest of this F embroider. And then we'll add the rest of the embroidery. Yes, Debbie, a sweatshirt or a t-shirt. I do think a sweatshirt works really nice because it's a little bit heavier fabric. And of course the yarn feels like it's a little bit, um, it adds some bulk to the front because you really are sewing a bunch of yarn on. But I think on a sweatshirt, it's absolutely perfect. And for spirit wear or something like that, this looking sporty, it is absolutely a perfect look. At least I think so. All right, so you can see how it's stitching the yarn right to the shirt. So cute. And then we will re-hoop and add the rest of this sweatshirt. So it does like some funky things up here in the corner. You can see it's kind of making a um, point and then it does the rest of the F out from there. So some of the letters, I feel like the way it makes them are definitely interesting, but it's probably figured out the best way to stitch the yarn. Who am I to argue? It looks cute. I think actually combining it with the regular embroidery even adds a greater um, element of funness. I should have worn my sweatshirt that I made. So um, my son's school, my high, this, my son's high school is called Forge, and they're the Forge Fury. So I put the Forge in the block letters like I'm doing right here. And then I put Fury in a really cool scripty letter underneath that actually overlaps on part of this yarn couching. And that's what we'll be doing um, with this one as well. And so I think the way that it overlaps is actually really beautiful um, and it adds just a fun detail. So I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy to add the overlap and put them together and then i've also i'm going to show you also how to import some fonts to your machine and play around with them because i don't want any of them built in fonts i want something scriptier and cool so i'll show you how that's done okay so it is finished embroidering okay again i'm gonna pull out some of the yarn because I want enough to pull through the back and tie it off. But now I'm finished with the yarn. So I'm actually going to pull it out, pull it off and around the side and get rid of it. All right, we will go and um, uh, pull these all back in just a minute. I do want to point out that I use an off-white thread on this yarn and on this one I used a white thread and you can see that these letters, I don't know if you can see, they actually look a little off-white just because of the thread that I used for the stitching. So make sure, make sure that you do use the same color thread. It really makes a difference. All right. Okay, so now on to the rest of this project. Let's see if we can import the fonts that I want to use using my memory stick or my USB stick. Sorry, I'm going to lean right in front of here. There are two ports on this machine and I never, I need to. Okay, so we're going to go home and delete this. We're going to go back to embroidery. And I put the USB in there. Let me get the other one. There are two USBs on the side of this machine. So make sure you plug it into the right one. All right. So I, on 
this USB just put the letters that I needed, okay? And these are one and a half inch letters. So we're gonna arrange them so that they spell what we want in a cool scripty way. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit, rotate, Okay, I, I don't know, so I'm just gonna keep adding. I don't know if I can fit all of the font. Should we take guesses now? Can I get the whole word on here? Or am I gonna have to switch to a larger hoop? I guess I need to get. Okay, so here's, you need to make sure they're overlapping just how you want them to be because that's how it will embroider out. So I'm just gonna start placing all of the letters. It's a little bit tedious because you have to import them one at a time, but this is a font that I purchased off Etsy and um, it actually came in a font bundle. So there were like five or six different fonts that came together and I love them all. Sometimes I'll combine them. So you can use the arrows here. You're making sure that the edges are overlapping so it looks like cursive. I mean, that's what you want. That's what I want. So that's what the font is on there. Okay, so just going through and adding each one. Of course, making sure edit, rotate, make sure you spell the words correctly as you do it. Uh, there's a stylus that came with this. I'm really bad at using that, but sometimes when it's something like this, I feel like maybe I should be using the stylus. Okay, add. Okay, again, we're spelling the word Christian, and it's going to say, oh, faith Christian when we're done for my daughter's school. I don't even know why I bought this sweatshirt. I've had it literally in my drawer for years. And the other day I was like, oh, I'm gonna embroider a sweatshirt for her. So this was perfect. So this one you gotta kind of decide where are you gonna connect? Because some places it like makes sense exactly where you're connecting the letters. And some ST don't, aren't quite as natural. Now the S and the T I'm guessing they won't connect. And I think we're gonna be able to fit the whole thing. You see that? Okay, so we'll have a little break between the S and the T. It won't um, be quite so joined just because the script doesn't seem to join up. All right, we're gonna reuse the I and you can use it as many times as you want. So. Instead of uploading the whole font alphabet to a USB, I like to just add the letters that I'm gonna be using. It's a whole lot easier and whole, and loads a whole lot quicker when I just have like 10 letters uploaded on my USB stick rather than all of them. Okay, so that's a little tip. And last one, almost done. I thought this would be fun to show, and now I realize how tedious it is. But you can see my process for joining the letters and positioning them. Now, of course, we're going to have to, it all, this all fits in the 5x7 hoop, so that's the good news. The bad news is it's not centered. So I'm gonna to have to center it. Now I think if I select the whole thing, I can move it. Okay, actually, should put it towards the bottom of the hoop. No, that just goes to the middle. So if you put that dot in the middle, that's gonna center it in the middle. So I'll take that and then we're gonna move it down so we can put, the um, letters above it. 
Okay, and we're gonna add that to the embroidery. All right, then we can go ahead and where am I? Can't I join all the like there's one place, now I'm not gonna be able to do it, where you can join all the letters. Oh, here. Right? No. Too many things on this machine. I want it to be where it's all this one color. Oh, maybe I have to go into embroidery first. No? I don't know. Someone knows where it is right away. You tell me. I know where the button is, but I can't think of it. Okay. So, ooh, a mouse and a cursor to control the screen. So you just plug it into one of those ports. Oh, I'm going to have to try that. That's a really good idea. I do have a USB mouse. All right, we're switching back over here. We're gonna rehoop this one more time. You're gonna have to deal with me being all squirt, short and squatty again. Go to embroidery and the icon you should first it. I know, I'm looking for it. I gotta go back and find it. I don't wanna have to like hit start after every letter. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to, um, Center the hoop over the embroidery so that the our, the second part of the um, word will be hopefully centered over the embroidery. And it's just going to be in this small 5 by 7 hoop. It's not bigger than that. And if I can get it nice and straight in here, then we can just put it in and it's gonna be really easy. Okay, so of course, if you are sewing your sweatshirt from scratch, I absolutely would do all this embroidery before sewing the sweatshirt together. And I just posted recently a gorgeous sweatshirt that I made for my daughter. And I absolutely did do all of the hooping first or all of the embroidery first, because I sewed it for her from fabric. Way, way, way easier. All right, so this is hooped. Now the next thing we need to do before we add the next part of the embroidery is get rid of these yarn tails that are in the middle. Some of them are up the top and those aren't gonna be in the way, but the ones that are gonna be where we're embroidering, we need to pull to the back because otherwise the embroidery can get all caught up in there. So I use a darning needle, thread the yarn through it, poke it through. I'm doing this while it's hooped because actually that makes it way easier. And pull it through, okay? So we're gonna just go down the bottom, make sure your darning needle has a nice big eye Make it easier. The part, the problem with the darning needle is it's pretty blunt. And then pull it to the back side. Okay, so I'm gonna go across the bottom of this design, pulling those tails to the back. Then we can do the next step. I probably need a big eye needle that's a little bit sharper maybe, but this works. And again, any that are um, the loose tails that are along the top, I'm just leaving. I do tie these off to each other or just tie a knot on the back when I'm finished. And then um, I do put like a, a piece of the fusible embroidery backing on here because my daughter really doesn't like this embroidery, the feel of the embroidery back, all the stitching um, against her skin. So we make sure we take care of that. Okay, so you can see the bottom is all nice and clean. Hopefully, I think it's centered in the hoop. So we'll be able to add our next stitching. 
pull it nice and tight. We still have the same stabilizer on the back, okay, that we're working with. And let's go do the next part. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and this squatty, squishy camera is driving me crazy. <laughs> Just what we all want to be squished smaller. Okay. There we go. We're back over here. And let's pull this back. Sorry. All right, so we're gonna put this in the machine. Actually, we're gonna change out the foot to the embroidery foot. That's on it. Where's my screwdriver? All right, so we're gonna take off this couching attachment on the side. Okay, we don't want that. And then this couching foot, I'm also going to remove. Okay, it has like a little guide here for the yarn and then goes through there. Put the embroidery foot on. So we could have taken another picture with uh, my snap um, to position this. But I'm gonna show you another fun positioning tool ah, as well, um, if you don't wanna go through using the app, okay? So let's, plus it's, this is fairly easy to position, but let me just show you what else you can do. Okay, so I'll slide this in, pull out all the extra sweatshirt. I'm going to use this gold, maroon and gold are the school's main colors. Probably should have, I didn't get any cool looking yarn to go with it, but I think these will look good. Okay, again, we're going to pull those yarn tails out of the way for the ones that we're not using. And okay, so if I go to embroidery, this is where I should be able to find that button for the thread. Yeah, where I can change it all. But here's what I'm also gonna do. We're gonna turn on, there's a cool little laser light that will shine down right under your needle um, on there, and that helps me to position where I want this to be. So there is definitely a, oh, this one, nope. Where's the button? There's a button that makes it so these all stitch out in one thing, but I like totally can't find it. All right, I need to move this. It's right there, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna move this up and I'm looking at my laser light and I'm seeing where that is positioned on my machine and of course where the needle is, using that to put this where I want it to go. Goodness, I guess I need that mouse that she was talking about. So I want a little bit of the bottom to overlap, but not a lot, okay? So we're gonna try that. We can also go here, positioning. This tells you exactly the position. So this will show me where that C is going to be, where that's going to be, where the middle is going to be. I need to go it up a little bit higher because it is not, I want it to be overlapping. Just a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry. This is like painfully slow, moving that around. All right, so let's try this again. That's where that's gonna be. That's where that's gonna be. That's where that's gonna be. Put it back to the center. 
And we're going to move it just a little bit up more. But apparently, this is moving very, very slow. Okay. Now, uh, the other embroidery. Yes, this full icon. That's the one. I got it. Yes. Yeah, so it's on this, this page with the move. Um, so this is going to make sure that all of our threads, now when we go here to embroidery, I thought I hit them. They were all the same. It doesn't seem to stay. I don't know. All right, I'm sliding this embroidery topping stabilizer over my yarn so that none of it gets stuck in. I don't want any of the yarn getting stuck when, it, when it's embroidering this, okay? Because I want it to embroider nicely and fully and not get stuck on the yarn. And then this is a um, water soluble, so you can wash that away when you're done. Super easy. And you just hold it while it gets started. And then it'll keep it in place just fine, okay? So I'll get it started and then I'll bring you a little bit closer. I am gonna go into the settings I had slowed this way down. What was I embroidering the other day? Oh, I was embroidering on paper, which is super fun, um, but I wanted it to go really slow. So we're gonna speed this back up so it doesn't take forever. And we're gonna go ahead and start this. And then I'll bring the camera over closer so you can see. how it looks, but I'm just trying to keep this nice and flat. Of course, you could use pins or something else as well. And we'll show you how it looks. Hit layout, you got it. I don't know. I'm having trouble with that. The single color. It is all a single color, so maybe that's what it's doing, but I don't know. I thought they could do it better. not do a very good job embroidering the C. It like didn't fully feel fill it. I wonder if um like fabric is hooped tightly. Huh. It did not fill that very well. I will have to try and go over that again, but let's do another couple letters so you can see. And of course it's not doing all as one file, but did not feel like I wanted, but I can always go back over. If the next one messes up as well, then I'll have to. Oh, so it's getting stuck on my yarn. So crazy. It, I have done this for like four other t-shirts and it hasn't had any trouble getting through and going over it. Huh. I'm gonna I'm not gonna keep going on this because I feel like I'm just gonna mess it up even more. And who wants to watch me completely mess up a project? So I am just gonna um <laughs> stop here for now and figure this out before I completely mess it up. But the yarn couching turned out cute. The other words, I promise I've done this on several other several other sweatshirts. So I don't know why it's weird. I might have to rip out this little bit of the gold embroidery and then start it over. Um, but I don't know if my foot is pressing it too low. I really don't know because it's getting stuck on the yarn, but I did this.
So, and that's why I thought this sheet over it would work. So I'm confused. I'm unsure. There's a link in the description of this video that you can click to check out when I did this and it was successful. Obviously I thought it would be successful because I was going to do it for a live show. Um, but I'll go back and check this out. So maybe it's the font I'm using. Maybe it's the size font I'm using. Who knows? But something to investigate and I'll have to check it out. If I get it figured out, I will um, post a picture of the finished result and we'll check it out then. But until then, keep trying, keep uh, experimenting. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you have to use your steam ripper, but no one wants to see me do that on a live show. So I will do that off camera and be back next week with something fun that hopefully is more successful than this week's project. But we had some success with the yarn, so we'll keep going with it. So anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to call this one a finish and uh, work on this behind the scenes. So we'll see you next week. Bye.